Welcome back family, AVS here and today I have decided to start a series on a topic that I have been fascinated by for years and that is Antarctica. Now you may be wondering why this is a Christian channel right? And yes you are correct but as followers of the way, the truth and the life shouldn't we be interested in the truth of the reality that we live in and the true history of our creator's world and what our creator's world actually is? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves now, but if you are interested, then buckle up because this is going to be an epic journey. Introduction. Now we're going to start off with the Antarctic Treaty and what exactly that is in episode one. So the Antarctic Treaty is an international agreement signed in 1959 by 12 nations with an interest in Antarctica. Now today, the treaty has been signed by 54 countries, including all major powers. Now, try and get every country in the world to sign a treaty today and agree on everything and see how hard that task would be. Now, its primary objective is apparently to preserve the pristine environment of Antarctica as a scientific preserve and promote international cooperation in science research. Now, under the treaty, Antarctica is demilitarized and designated as a zone of peace, meaning there is no military there and it must be a peaceful location, meaning that military activity is completely prohibited. Additionally, the treaty prohibits any activity related to the exploration of resources. Now let that sink in, including minerals, oil and gas. This means that commercial mining and drilling for resources are not allowed on the continent. So what exactly is being done there? The treaty's provisions also ensure the freedom of scientific investigation, enabling scientists from all over the world to conduct research in Antarctica. Now, how about you go and try and get permission to do some scientific research in Antarctica and see how that goes. The treaty recognizes the importance of Antarctica in global science and sets out guidelines for scientific research and cooperation among countries. Pretty interesting. So in summary, what is claimed about the Antarctic Treaty basically is that it is an example of international cooperation for the preservation of the environment and scientific research. Its provisions include the prohibition of military activity and mineral exploration on the continent, ensuring that Antarctica remains a haven of peace and environmental protection. Well, let's keep going because the journey is only just beginning. And before we even get into the depth of this subject, let me know what you believe about the Antarctic Treaty in the comment section below, and if you think that it is far deeper than what they have told us. Either way, the Antarctic Treaty is an impressive international agreement that has been signed by the majority of the world's nations. That is impressive in itself. How did this even happen? Now on the surface, the treaty appears to be a benign agreement aimed to preserve a fragile ecosystem and promote international scientific cooperation. However, some people have raised questions about the treaty's true purpose and whether it serves a more sinister agenda. Have you heard of Admiral Burr? Either way, some theories argue that the treaty is designed to suppress knowledge and technology that could threaten the status quo. They suggest that Antarctica may hold secrets about our planet's past or contain resources that could change the balance of power among nations. What do you think? Now, as a result, either way, the treaty's provisions banning military activity and mineral exploration may be seen as attempts to keep the secrets under wraps. And others argue that such claims are unfounded and that the treaty is indeed a noble effort to protect a unique and fragile environment. And that's why I love making these type of videos and why I've decided to start this series, because I'm interested in what you think. So be sure to let me know. Now, many point to the treaty's provisions for scientific cooperation and environmental protection as evidence of its benign purpose. So the question really remains, is the Antarctic Treaty a pact for the greater good or a more sinister agreement aimed at keeping secrets and suppressing knowledge? Honestly, it's up to each individual to examine the evidence and make up their own mind, which is what we're going to do in this series. Part 1. The History of the Antarctic Treaty now, Antarctica is the southmost continent on Earth. Well, at least that's where the compasses point. And history tells us that it was first sighted in 1820 by a Russian expedition, which was apparently led by, wait for it, Fabian Gottlieb von Bellingshausen. For the next century, explorers from various nations, including Britain, Norway, and the United States, 
undertook expeditions to Antarctica. And remember, we are going by the common knowledge, by what history has made public knowledge. Now, they were seeking to discover the continent's secrets and claim it for their respective countries. But there was a quote-unquote heroic age of Antarctic exploration, which began in the 19th century, with expeditions led by the likes of Ruud Amundsen, Robert Falcon Scott, and Ernest Shackleton. These explorers faced incredible hardships as they journeyed to the continent, often enduring extreme weather conditions and risking their lives to chart unknown territory. But during World War II, Antarctica became strategically important as a potential base for military operations. Several countries, including Germany and Britain, made plans to establish bases on the continent. And in the post-war period, the United States and the Soviet Union began conducting research in Antarctica. It was actually in 1959 that the Antarctic Treaty was signed in Washington DC by 12 countries, including the United States, Soviet Union and Britain. Now, the treaty, which has been signed by 54 countries or 54 nations, aims to promote scientific research and preserve the continent as a place of peace and environmental protection, as we mentioned earlier. And also, as we touched on briefly, the treaty designated Antarctica as a scientific preserve and demilitarized the continent and prohibited any activities relating to the exploration of resources. So what exactly is going on here? I'm extremely tempted to talk about Admiral Byrd, but personally, I believe he deserves an entire episode for himself because he's a very interesting character and has a major part in, well, the entire topic of Antarctica. Part two, the hidden agenda of the Antarctic Treaty. Now, this is where it gets real interesting. There are some who believe that the Antarctic Treaty, which has been in place since 1959, is not the noble agreement for international scientific cooperation and environmental protection that has been presented on surface level. But instead, they argue that the treaty is a quote-unquote pact with the devil that seeks to suppress knowledge and technology that could threaten the powers that be. Now, one of the primary arguments made by those that believe in this theory is that Antarctica may contain secrets about our planet's past or technologies that could change the balance of power among nations. Some claim that ancient civilizations or even demonic beings may have left artifacts or structures on the continent, which could contain knowledge that would challenge our understanding of human history. Others argue that Antarctica may contain resources that are valuable enough to prompt nations to violate the treaty's ban on mineral exploration. Some have suggested that the continent could be rich in oil, natural gas, or rare earth metals, and that the treaty is designed to prevent countries from staking a claim to these resources, which would probably lead to war. However, while these claims do sound quite intriguing, there is little concrete evidence to support them apparently. The vast majority of scientific research conducted in Antarctica has focused on environmental and climate studies. Now remember, this is the public knowledge that we are presented with, rather than the search for ancient artifacts or valuable resources, which would be pretty interesting if that was public knowledge and there was some studies around it. Furthermore, the provisions on the Antarctic Treaty banning military activity and mineral exploration are seen by most nations as necessary. And these are used as means to preserve the continent's unique and fragile ecosystem, which I guess is understandable if it's true. And it is quite interesting because when have we ever came across a situation where every country in the entire world has agreed to sign this treaty and obeyed it? Well, are they obeying it? That's actually a... Yeah. Good question. Now, ultimately, the theory that the Antarctic Treaty is a pact with the devil receives major pushback, and the people who are advocating for that theory are normally mocked and put into the bracket of conspiracy theorists. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. Because you know on this channel, we stick to the facts. And whilst there is so much unknown information about Antarctica, it doesn't mean that we should fill in the blanks with our imagination. But what else has been claimed about Antarctica, which does have the possibility of being reality? Well, the idea that Antarctica may contain evidence of an advanced civilization is a popular and largely debated claim. 
While there have been reports of anomalous artifacts and structures found in Antarctica, many of these have apparently been debunked and they have claimed that these are natural formations or hoaxes. But what do you think? For example, in 2016, a theory circulated that a massive structure had been discovered in Antarctica using Google Earth. Now, Google Earth has discovered some very, very strange things. And I, in fact, found something on Google Earth that I planned on showing, but maybe that's for a later date. Now, the structure that was claimed to be evidence of an ancient civilization that had once inhabited the continent was found on Google Earth. However, further investigation revealed that the structure was apparently an artifact created by the stitching together of multiple satellite images. But once again, what do you think? Similarly, there have been claims of pyramids, underground tunnels, and even a lost city beneath the ice in Antarctica. And maybe these are some claims that we will go very deep into in later episodes. But for episode one, we're going to scratch the surface. Now, these claims have yet to be substantiated by any credible evidence. Well, at least credible to the standards of whoever says credibility is credible. But you get the point. Now, hypothetically, if the theory of the Antarctic Treaty being a pact with the devil was true and really was seeking to suppress knowledge and technology, it would have significant implications for our understanding of the world and our place in it. Firstly, it would suggest that there are hidden forces at work that are actively suppressing knowledge and technology that could change our understanding of the world. And when I say the world, I mean the physical world. Now, this would be a major blow to the concept of open inquiry and scientific exploration, which are fundamental to our understanding of the world around us. Well, at least those who don't know Yah. Secondly, it would suggest that there is a great deal of knowledge and technology that is being kept from the public, which could have significant implications for our understanding of history, science, and technology. Now, if it was true, this would be a major challenge to the transparency and accountability of governments and other organizations that are responsible for safeguarding this knowledge, unless they was also in on it. Finally, if the theory were true, it would raise significant ethical questions about the use of power and the role of secrecy in society, secret societies. It would force us to ask whether, you know, the suppression of knowledge and technology is ever justified. Justified by who and who gets to decide and what the consequences of such suppression might be for our society as a whole. So if the theory of the Antarctic Treaty being a pact with the devil were true, it would also challenge some of the most basic assumptions about the world our place in it, and the role of power and secrecy in society, as well as what exactly is the world. Part 3. Alternative Explanations for the Antarctic Treaty Now you know that I always like to be fair, logical, rational, and also accurate in my discoveries and explanations, whilst never compromising on my own belief system. So whilst the Antarctic Treaty being a pact with the devil is certainly an intriguing claim, it's also important to consider the alternative explanations for its existence. And there could even be multiple explanations for its existence. One such explanation is the desire to preserve a fragile ecosystem. Now, Antarctica is a unique and fragile ecosystem that is home to many species of plants and animals that are found nowhere else in the world. And we know that the Most High, when he created the world, he said that we must look after it. So it is a good thing to look after the ecosystem. Now, Antarctica is a critical part of Earth's biosphere, and preserving it is of utmost importance for the health of our plane. So no matter what you believe about the Antarctic Treaty, no matter what is true about it, we must look after the nature. We must look after the animals, because Yah created them and said they are good. Now, another explanation for the existence of the treaty is the recognition of the importance of scientific cooperation. So because Antarctica is one of the most inhospitable places on Earth, apparently, and conducting research there requires a significant amount of resources and cooperation, the treaty provides a framework for international scientific collaboration, allowing researchers from different countries to work together in pursuit of common goals. But like I said, is it that easy to get that permission? Furthermore, the treaty recognizes the importance of peaceful cooperation and the avoidance of conflict in a region that has historically been the site of geopolitical tension. So by prohibiting military activity on the continent, the treaty helps to ensure that Antarctica remains a place of scientific inquiry and peaceful cooperation instead of 
a battleground instead of the more powerful countries kind of forcing themselves over certain boundaries and using their military power to go into regions where they shouldn't be. So it's pretty interesting either way. And now we have presented quite a few options. We have to understand that each of the alternative explanations for the Antarctic Treaty has its own potential benefits and drawbacks. And this is normally how I come to conclusions. I dive deep into the information and I analyze it from both perspectives. And then I line it up with my worldview, which I know to be true. And I compare which one is the most likely to be reality. So the pact with the devil theory in terms of plausibility and potential impact is quite high if you observe it from the biblical perspective. But the benefit of the preservation of a fragile ecosystem is clear and the protection of the unique species and habitations, for example, in Antarctica is crucial for maintaining biodiversity and sustaining the health of the planet as a whole. But these two theories do not actually contradict one another and both could be true. We know that there are the ignorant, we know that there are those with knowledge, those with gnosis, and we know that there are people with influence. Now, when these three are combined, there can be a multiplicity of options basically within what is true and what is actually taking place. Everything becomes far more complicated than the initial goal. And at this point, we now need to ask ourselves: is the initial goal even in effect anymore? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And we also have to maintain a logical perspective and remember that even if there are people with evil intentions, which we know there definitely are in the world, even if those people had their hand in powerful political positions where they were actually making decisions in treaties, they would still want to preserve the planet because they don't want to destroy the place where they live. Well, at least I hope not. What do you think? However, the drawback of this explanation still does not explain the potential presence of hidden knowledge or technology that could have been suppressed by the treaty. You know, basically, just because they wanted to preserve the planet and just because they weren't doing a pact with the devil, it doesn't mean that there wasn't some hidden technology there or ancient societies. Do you understand? There can be so many options and that is why I love making these videos, as I said earlier. I want to know what you think about the subject and if you have any information that you would like to bring forth. Now, the benefit of scientific cooperation is that it allows researchers from different countries to work together in the pursuit of common goals. And we definitely know as human beings, Many people have common goals and sharing knowledge and resources to make progress in the study of Antarctica and nature in general and technology in general is definitely beneficial. But the drawback is that it assumes that all nations are working towards the same goals and are willing to share knowledge openly, which may not always be the case. And we can observe that by observing history. And finally, the benefit of promoting peaceful international relations is that it can help to prevent conflict and foster understanding between nations. But this also isn't always the goal or even the desire of every nation. However, the drawbacks are that it assumes that all nations will abide by the treaty and try not to exploit Antarctica for their own gain, which we also know is highly probable. So, that is why this situation is so complex. And when you have all of that information and then you take a look at the pact with the devil theory, it isn't as far-fetched as it may have first seemed. Because what are they actually claiming? They're claiming that there is a hidden agenda behind the treaty that seeks to suppress knowledge or technology that could threaten the existing power structures of the world. Now, like I said, while this theory is intriguing, the drawbacks are only that there's no concrete evidence behind it. There's no concrete evidence. But is there evidence? That's what we may look at later on in the series. And does this evidence support and rely heavily on speculation and conjecture? If yes, we have to throw it out. But if no, what is there to be discovered? Conclusion. So in this video, we explored the possibilities of why the Antarctic Treaty was formed. One of them was a sinister pact that seeks to suppress knowledge and technology that could threaten the status quo. And what exactly was presented to support this theory? Well, the fact that Antarctica is one of the least explored and understood regions on Earth, and this is a fact, and the presence of anomalous artifacts and structures could indicate the existence of an advanced civilization that is not allowed to be explored. The alternative explanations for the treaty's existence were also considered, such as the desire to preserve a fragile ecosystem and the recognition of the importance of scientific cooperation. 
These explanations were evaluated in terms of their potential benefits and drawbacks. But ultimately, the question of whether the Antarctic Treaty is a benign agreement or a sinister pact remains open to interpretation, and I would love to hear what you think about this in the comment section below. While there is evidence to support both sides of the argument, it's up to each individual to decide which explanation they find most compelling and most believable, and also most likely. So family, I love you very much. Let me know in the comment section below what you believe about this entire situation. This was the first video of this style, and I pray that you enjoyed it because I do plan on doing much more in-depth and detailed and educated videos such as this one rather than just reporting on news and current events. I'm also going to dive into the Bible at this depth and even deeper and present the information in a similar way because I believe that much of the content nowadays has been dumbed down and this is actually reflected on society. So I want to dive far deeper into the Bible and into these topics than most of the content online does and present it to you in a far more educated and thought-provoking way. So if you enjoy this style of content, please do let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and also share this with a friend or family member it really helps me out big shout out to the channel members thank you so much for the financial support on my channel it goes a long way and if you want to join our discord server so that you can discuss information with like-minded people feel free to join my discord server apart from that family may yah bless you and shine his face upon you always and give you peace and i'll see you on the next one shalom shalom